He also says, uh, what he also mentions this objection that our faith to, in, in regard to this same question of, you know, what if I'm knowledgeable? I have no, I have no concern. There should be no concern, right? That I would be seduced, seduced. Bishop Hayes says this, the second objection <clears throat> is that our faith is a gift of God. Okay. So our faith is a gift of God that we have. He says, our faith then, being a gift of God, our perseverance in it is no less so a gift of God. So not only is our faith a gift of God, our perseverance in our faith is a gift of God. So it says, if therefore a person, though ever so learned, should shall a mighty shall offend Almighty God in doing what is dishonorable to his holy faith by putting himself in a position to be seduced by attending these houses of heretics and false religions and hearing their sermons. By putting yourself in this position, he's provoking God. He says he's provoking God to withdraw that gift from him, of which by his disobedience, he renders himself unworthy. So you're basically, you know, playing with fire. You're, you're basically testing God. You know, our Lord, what do we hear in the first Sunday of Lent? You know, uh, thou shalt not test the Lord thy God. You know, jump off the cliff, the Lord, the devil tells the Lord. Jump off the jump off the cliff and he'll protect you. Jump off it. He says, uh, the scriptures say, thou shalt not test the Lord thy God. So when we put ourselves in these kind of positions, we're really testing, we're, we're basically saying that I'm strong. I'm strong in the faith that I have. And I, and I don't, and it doesn't matter where, you know, the danger I put myself in, I'm not going to lose it. It's an arrogance. Because the faith we have, the belief that we have, believe this faith is a gift from God. And our perseverance is a gift from God. And instead of growing in grace and in that gift by doing virtuous acts, we are basically mocking God by going to these places, by mocking the gift he gives us. And we can easily fall to that seduction because he will withdraw his grace. We're, we're, put, we're, we're playing with fire, okay? Because... This gift we have is not our own. The strength that we have is not our own. It, it comes from God. And that's what Bishop Hay is saying. So just because you think you have knowledge and that you're not going to, there's no fear of you being seduced, don't play with that kind of fire because God is not mocked. He, he you, you, the gift you have of, of faith, it comes from him, right? So, and then Bishop Hay mentions that how many of the of of the heretics and false teachers came from those within the leadership of the church that were, should have known better, who were were knowledgeable of the faith, but how many of them fell into heresy and to error? You know, they're not in any way. I mean, if they can fall into it, how much the the the, the layman? You know. You know so he, he mentions here. Uh, says, it is impossible there should be any solid reason in favor of falsehood capable of convincing the understanding of a person who is well instructed in the faith of Jesus Christ. But the most learned and best instructed, instructed are not proof against their own passions and seduction of the heart, and therefore can have no security against these if they culpably expose themselves to danger, by which they offend God and provoke him to withdraw his grace from them and leave them to pray to their own passions, which, as we have seen, has often been done. Bishop Hay is saying that when we that the that the that the false prophets they they come with what he what does he say? They come with soothing words uh, to move your heart, to move your heart away from the truth, because they don't come with reasons. The reasons there's no reason there's no fact or reason that can that can trump or uh, go against the truth the truth of the Catholic faith, but instead they come to your passions and into your emotions, and they move you in your heart and seduce your heart because your heart is easily moved because we're fallen. We have we're, we're easily moved by emotion. 
but best uh, we're easily moved by emotion and our hearts can be seduced to error even though in our minds we know that this is wrong but it once where our emotions are moved by the soothing words and the you know emotional move words that these false prophets bring it clouds our thinking in our mind and we uh we will then the, the even the greatest and the mightiest of knowledge will fall right and then they'll use up any excuse to not believe the truth anymore he says uh he says, on this account, we find that the command to avoid all fellowship with false teachers is given to all without exception. Now listen, it's given to all without exception. Uh, to the learned as well as to the unlearned, to the pastors as well as to the people. It was, he says, it was to his very apostles that our Lord himself said, take heed that no man seduce you. So <laughs> he's warning his apostles that they can be seduced so take heed, right? He says, if they say to you, lo, here's Christ, or there's Christ, don't believe them. So, and also he mentions to Timothy, he says to Timothy, avoid these. So it's just because you think that you have the knowledge to be, you know, that you can be protected from falling from the faith, take heed lest you fall. Because he he warns not just the lady from from attending these false churches, but he's even he's warning the most eminent apo eminent apostles, the 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 foundational apostles of Timothy, Paul, Saint Peter, all these people to to not to take heed lest he be seduced by these false teachers. And Saint Paul's even warning Timothy, a bishop of the church, to avoid them. So it not just it's not just a command to the lady to not go there, but it's also a command to the bishops, even given to Saint Peter himself, right? The first pope. He says, "Be not seduced by them. Take heed. Be not seduced." So, I mean, how much more should we be careful? How much more should the bishops today be careful? I mean, are they any better than the than the apostles who were given this warning? Absolutely not. And this is what Saint. This is what what uh, Bishop Hayes says. Says who who can presume upon himself if these pillars and first pastors of the church were so strictly cautioned to be aware of the danger? Like who are we then? Right. 